Texas, you know, and that, that really makes it great. It makes no sense to the world that all people should have equal value. Try explaining that to any smart person. You know, the ones they call, you hear them on TV all the time, say, that man's brilliant, brilliant. <laughs> I try going to those brilliant people and say, do you believe that all people have equal value? No, no. Brilliant people have equal value. They have great value, you know. Or explain to them that all people have no value through their worldly abilities, accomplishments, and wisdom. Mm -hmm. We don't. We don't have any value. Everything we have, we were given, and without Christ, we're nothing. So we have no value without it. But why is this so hard for the natural man to understand? Well, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. Because the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. So, what you have to talk to a natural man about is Jesus Christ and him crucified. That's where faith comes in. And after that, after he believes that, then he can understand all these other things. But until he does, he can't. They're foolishness to him. We are foolishness to them because they have a spiritual deficit disorder. Remember that. The next time somebody says, well, I just can't believe that. I just can't understand it. He says, it's all right, sister. You have a spiritual deficit disorder. There is a cure. But so far, you're not going to be able to understand those things. It's okay. They think that, out, that, things, they think that visible accomplishments or outside things that you can see is what's important. That's the natural man. We know that God looks at the heart. Amen. You know, that it's the unseen things that are important. And that's why, let's go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 26 to 28, where Paul says, For ye see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, in other words, that's the ones they call brilliant, not many mighty, powerful in other words, not many noble, we have any kings in here or princesses, are called. It says, you see that not many of them are called. Not many of the people that worldly wisdom thinks are the stars of the universe, not many of them are called. Amen. But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. Amen. Now it took me... Wow, at least three quarters of my life so far to realize that I was one of the foolish things of this world. <laughs> there was a time I thought I was probably one of those wise, you know, and that. So, but it took me a while to realize that I was one of the foolish things of this world. So he says he's choosing the foolish things to confound the wise. See, the wise are saying it's only if you're super smart or you're super great or you're super powerful, that's what's good for you. Well, then God takes the foolish things of the world Amen. and uses them to do His work. Mm -hmm. And that's to confound the wise. What's happening there? That, you mean those are Galileans? Those people that are all speaking in languages that we understand? They're mm -hmm. ignorant people? And God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. You know, before I knew the Lord, I thought I was strong. <laughs> and He's chosen the base things. Verse 28, the the base things of the world and things which are despised hath God chosen, yea, and things which are not to bring to naught things that are. He uses the lowly to bring down the high or to prove that the high are wrong. That's what that's clearly saying. And God did that on purpose. So he takes us that aren't the wise and the powerful of the world and he grows us and he changes us right in front of them. And it will always be clear to us and to those who know us, to those who have been on the road with us over the years, that no glory goes to us. Amen. See, that's that the neatest true. thing. Because we didn't do it. He did it. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 29 to 31, where he says, 
that no flesh should glory in his presence. We don't have the thing to glorify. I mean, for whatever it's worth in a man's heart, it does make me feel good when I see a, a man catch a touchdown pass in a football game and get down on his knees and thank the Lord, you know, because at least in his heart he's acknowledging the Lord had something to do with that touchdown, you know. So, no flesh should glory in his presence, but of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us, wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption that's where we get it is through christ not through the brilliance the human brilliance yes. that according as it is written he that glorieth let him glory in the lord boy that's kind of neat and it's something to remember you know one day you're going to get an award and you're going to get they're going to put you up there to walk up there and say some words and if you remember who you are and who all the glory goes to, yes. then you will remember that I wouldn't be earning this award if it wasn't for Jesus Christ and it was only through Him. And you've got a chance to testify the truth. A person intent on proving that any positive changes had to come from his or her own will and effort is trying to glorify themselves. I mean, I've had that experience, and I've had others that have, you know, where you go to somebody and you say, man, and, and somehow they see some good in you now and some accomplishments and improvements. Say, man, you really have made something of yourself. And you say, no, I haven't made anything of myself. I'm the same thing that you always knew. If you see anything good and you see, you see the Lord shining through me, oh, no, because they don't have the Lord, see? And they, what they're really trying to do when they're trying to give you credit for your accomplishments is they're trying to give themselves credit for their accomplishments. That's why they're doing that. Oh, no, Frank. I mean, you did this. This is a, I'm proud of you, man. And what they really mean, I'm proud of what I've done. I want that side of the world. I don't want the side of the world where I don't get to have my pride. So I want you to have your pride. You bother me when you don't have pride in your accomplishments because you're taking mine away from me, too. <laughs> they don't say that. But that's, that's what they mean. And, of course, in the case of the Jews that Paul was dealing with, they insisted that salvation had to come through the law, through the traditions and circumcision and the old Jewish religion. Because it was through that that they were wise and mighty and noble. You take that away, they're right down where we are, you know, right at the same level. That's why they persecuted Paul. Let's go to Acts chapter 15. Take a peek at their attitude here. Now Paul's out there. He's convincing some Jews, but a lot of Gentiles right and left were saved by the Lord. He died on the cross for us. He was buried and he rose again for our sins and everybody has joy and they're excited and they're enjoying it and they know they have freedom in Christ and the Jews hear about this and it says in uh, chapter 15 verse 1 it says certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren they went to these joyful people and said except ye be circumcised after the manner of Moses ye cannot be saved right. okay how many in here haven't been circumcised yet <laughs> well, Are you in trouble, sister? <laughs> and then, and then uh, verse 5, But then rose up certain of the sect of the Pharisees which believed. This means religious leaders that believe in Jesus Christ, saying that it was needful to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. What are you guys doing having all this fun and feeling all this freedom and joy? Get back under the law. Who's trying to drag you back under bondage through laws, rituals, traditions, and the performance standards of your fathers? If they have too much influence on you, it's because you spend too much time listening to them. Or the tapes that they've put in your mind your whole life long. And too little time studying God's Word for us today. I mean, that's, that's just as simple as that. You know, when I was young, when I was in high school, I didn't study much.